Many of you are likely old enough, like myself, to remember when award season was a big deal, when the Oscars were can't miss. You could even watch the Emmys and stuff like that. Obviously, out there all along was the Eisners, the comic book equivalent of the Oscars. No one cares about the Oscars. No one cares about the Emmys. They've just become a weird self-licking ice cream cone where everyone goes up there, they congratulate themselves, and they get out the message, which I find to be completely off-putting, which I think most people actually do. So this week we got the nominations for this year's 2022 Eisner Awards, and we have some opinions on those. Here with me is the Batman historian, the DC aficionado, Josh McDonald. How are you doing, Josh? I am doing well, Wes. I'm, I'm ready to talk about awards and why they're irrelevant. DC Comics are nominated for more Eisners this year than any other publisher. If that doesn't tell you how shitty comic books are or how irrelevant the Eisners are, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, uh, award shows in general have their problems, right? Like what you mentioned it, like the Oscars, the Emmys, all this other crap, Grammys, all this stuff. But with the, with the Eisners in particular, it's like I think you have six people that determine who the nominations will be. I, I know we talk a lot about how much we dislike a lot of what's going on in comics, but the reality is there's a lot of really good indie comics out there. And sure. you should be highlighting those indie comics like nobody's business right now. And the, these awards are the perfect place to do it. And it's pretty much non-existent. Like you've got some representation here, but God, like there is not much at all. And you got DC walking away with the most nominations. This is the worst era of DC that, that many people can remember. Yeah. And, and, you know, I I'll preface it with this. You, you, you sent me a link cause I I'm busy a lot. And, and Wes is one of the people that kind of keeps me in the loop with things that are going on. So I can actually look and sound halfway intelligent, but you sent me the link and, and the link mentioned, like it was, I think CBR, but they mentioned Nightwing uh, leads with five nominations. And I <laughs> responded with fuck my life because I don't think the book's that good. And then I I will say, I then went and looked at what it was nominated for. And there's a lot of art nominations or the art's definitely pulling the weight. That I'm okay with. And I want to go back through and look at this again to see where DC's other nominations are coming in. Because what I will say is as unhappy as I am with DC, where they're doing a great job is with their artists. They have good artists on their books. They do good work, and it is saving their line. Because if they had crappy artists with these crappy writers, there would be no nominations here. I think they still would have nominations because there's such <laughs> an enormous disconnect between the panel that are that are voting for this and in the uh, the readers themselves. And when you see something like DC headlines, Eisner nominations, you know, and you're like, what? Yep. What am I reading that they're they're not reading? Like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. When you, like I had one viewer come in and they said, ha ha, you, you said Wonder Woman Historia was bad. It got nominated for best comic book of the year. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? This is not a show <laughs> YouTube channel. Yeah. There's some I, shills shilled out for a comic book they wanted to shill about. Like, get out of here with this. A lot of people bought and probably liked the art in Wonder Woman Historia. Bill Jimenez is a very good artist, which I think – personally was far over rendered and ended up looking kind of bad, in my opinion. The story did read like shit. If you read the Wonder Woman, Woman Historia comic book and you like Wonder Woman, you probably didn't like it. it yeah, I, I mean, that book in particular, the only praise I really heard coming from it from, from the groups that I associate with it. And look, I've got a wide variety of groups that I talk to and, and you know, um, people that have vastly different opinions than Wes. But pretty much the only consensus I got from people that liked the book was, hey, I, li I really liked the art. Mm -hmm. And I agree with Wes. I thought it was over-rendered, but I thought it was good and different, and I can respect it and appreciate it. And I do think the art, once again, is carrying the weight for this. But the book itself was not great, and people weren't talking about the story. So that, you know, that in and of itself is telling. There, there was a time in comics where, like, right now you're in this – time period where everyone just praises everything oh it's the best thing ever oh you're so great oh it's so this there was a time where people didn't do that but they also didn't bash books they would talk about what they liked and what they thought was good and if they didn't like it or they thought it was trash they just didn't talk about it that's what my friends do if they thought it was bad they just don't talk about it well that's not what i do i've taken a different <laughs> It's not what I do either. I bitch on here all the time. <laughs> Fuck it, man. Let's let, let's air it out. But it's just this. Um, there's a growing disconnect between yeah. the comic book industry itself, the publishers, and the fan base, mm -hmm. and it's not healthy. And it's quite evident within the nominations themselves. Yes, there are some things in here that I think are fantastic. That generation story, 
in the Superman red and yep. blue series from Daniel Warren Johnson is fantastic. Absolutely. That's as good of a, an eight page story that you'll ever read. It's very well conceived and executed story about Superman and his father. But there's a ton of other crap in there. You're like, this is insignificant and it's tripe. And I, and I think that's the problem here is it almost comes across as if there wasn't much effort put into deciding the nominations. And, and you know, like, like what you said, there's stuff that's nominated here for the various categories that when I read them, I was like, really? And it's not that I thought the book was bad. Some of them I do think are bad, but it's not that I thought the book was bad. It's just that I thought it was okay at best. And I, it's like, I'm sitting here looking at the category and I'm like, I feel like I could name five to 10 other books that holistically and generally speaking, get higher praise than what this book got. So I do think in a lot of ways, it's people, you know, buddy, buddy, like, oh, I'm going to support my friend or like, oh, this person's considered like a legend. We should give them some credit. Um, and I just, I don't agree with it. And and it's not even here. Like you mentioned just the the messages that are, that are pushed. It's not even in comics. We're seeing it in movies. We're seeing it in TV. We're seeing it in other mediums. Like, and it's just that they're leaning so heavily into it almost as a way to like prove themselves right. And it's like, you're not proving anything right. You're just saying what you've already said because you're the same people that's been trying to say it. Again, there's a disconnect. You know, audiences are not reading comics like they used to. You're not seeing sales numbers like you used to. People aren't going to movies like they used to. People aren't watching. Well, they're watching TV. But, uh, you know, what what companies are pushing, it's not what people are actually interested in. And you're seeing a backlash. You're seeing a negative uh, um, discussion around these things. And it's like at some point, I hope they're going to catch on, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I, I think the only thing that's come out recently pushing against this was Netflix had a had a like leak that they were like, no more of this crap. Like just do what we know is good. Yeah, you look at the nominations in in right beside Wonder Woman Historia for best comic issue of the year is Marvel Voices Identity <laughs> Number One. Have you heard any of your friends say that any of the Marvel Voices comic books are good? No, I hear the opposite. Exactly. And even when it's not that it's terrible, it's just that it's not, it's fine. It's fine. They don't it's, put anyone good on no. those comic books. They are designed to be shitty. They're, they're <laughs> yes. not meant to be good. They're just well, meant to represent something that people want to support. And that way they don't put a lot of money into it. So you go and you support it, you put it on the shelf, and you never read it because it's not good comic books. No, not at all. I, I have skimmed them, and every now and then you'll find a story in there that's decent, and that's about it. Yeah, so just putting something up there on a headline award, like best comic book issue of the year, it turns people off. It lets people know that there's something wrong in comic books. There's a disconnect between what they're trying to tell you is good and what's actually good. And as you mentioned, the same thing is happening you know, in, in movies and television and whatnot. I remember when the Oscars were, were can't miss television because – Yes, you would have your art house flicks like the piano and stuff like that, but you would also get the Titanic put up there for best picture because technically it is a brilliant picture. Is it a little bit too long? Yes, but you got Leo in there, you know, with star making performance. But now it just celebrates all this crap. It's like, what's the most Oscar bait thing that we could ever do in this world? And that's the only things that can get nominated. We can never nominate or appreciate or really um, identify anything that people actually like. Uh, I, I, yeah. And, and, you know, I think that's, that's meant to be the point is that you can look at these awards and, and kind of have faith in knowing like, Oh, I'm going to go pick this up and it's going to be quality. Even if it's not necessarily your cup of tea, it should be quality. And I can't say that like most of these nominations, I will find one or two that I'm like, okay, I agree with that. Other than that, no, there was, there was one subgroup. There's one nomination group that I thought was pretty much point on across the board and it was best limited series. But it's got Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray it's Bill got the, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's got the Good Asian. It's got the Mini Deaths of Layla Sar. It's got Stray, Stray Dogs. Dogs. I, I, it's got Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, which I disagree with, but fine. And the only other thing I hadn't read was Hocus Pocus, so I don't know about it. But there's four there that I'm like, yo, those are those are fucking great books. You should read them. And it's the only category that I walked away after reading that I was like, that was a good category. That will be interesting to to watch and see how it unfolds. Everything else, I'm like, oh, well, there's one good one. If they want the, the eyes news to be the Oscars of comic books, well, they've done that. They've made it pretty much unimportant to comic book readers. It's something that you <laughs> yeah. ignore. And maybe somebody like myself makes a video about it. We make fun of it. We identify like, listen, if these are the things that you want to identify as the best of the best, you're calling yourself out and you're exposing yourself as not knowing what a good comic book is. 
just because it has good art doesn't make it a good comic book. A good comic book has everything. I was going to say I mentioned Nightwing because they, they the article I read was the title was about Nightwing. And like I said, most of it is art related. It's got best cover artist, best pencil inker. Bruno Redondo agree with both of those. Best lettering. I honestly, I think most of us don't have a leg to stand on when we discuss lettering. I know, I know a little bit, but other than that, I'm like, uh, sure, it's good. Like it didn't distract but Nightwing me. Nightwing eighty seven is up for best comic issue of the year. Uh, That's a fucking gimmick comic to where it's like one large story told in one panel. I it's something that I can respect and I appreciate what they did and I but it wasn't I under- the best. No, 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 no. But and that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that's where that recognition needs to go into best ink, inker and, or pencil and inker. But you've got that. And then what makes it even worse is they got Nightwing listed as the best continuing series and it hasn't done anything for a year. No, no. It's like it's, it's not that they had a whole lot to work with, but there no. were better things out there than Nightwing. Absolutely. I don't think even Moon Knight was in there. And Moon Knight's been brilliant for the entire year. That's shameful. Y'all should be yeah. upset with yourselves. Jed McKay, uh, they're doing great work on that book. It should have been recognized. Yeah, the art's amazing. Uh, really cool story. But it's, it's just, like I said, the Eisners don't matter. No one gives a fuck because once you look at the list, yeah, there are a few things on there that are absolutely deserving. And I can mm-hmm. point you a few things like, yeah, that should be there, that should be there. But it's like on, I can count it on two hands. For the most part, it's a bullshit list. These are the things that they wish were the best comic books. Yeah. And there's a big difference between wishing this was good and actually executing it until they, until they were able to like, uh, you know, get that working together and actually the stuff they wish was good was actually good. It's just a joke. Agreed. I completely agree. The Eisners want you to believe that Kelly Sudakonic is the best comic writer of the year because of Wonder Woman Historia. I will admit the art is nice. I believe it's over-rendered, but it's nice. But the writing absolutely is substandard. Kelly Sudakonic never had it and certainly doesn't have it now. Definitely check this video out. The proof is in the pudding. Doc and I tore that comic book to fucking shreds because it sucked ass. 